Hi everybody, I'm back again with our next video. Today we are learning how to make tiny little black red dragons with the black markings, little chonksters. They are inspired by uh, Thembershad, for those of you who enjoy uh, tabletop RPGs. I think they're really cute. We've got two different versions. We've got one with a slightly more complex wing, and then we have one with a slightly smoother wing. They're fairly easy, but they do have some more things that are going to be a little bit complex. Mostly the spine, and then the trickier wings are going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I tried to make it as easy a pattern to figure out and to follow. So let's just jump into it. Uh, the materials you're going to need is a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook a pair of 8 millimeter black safety eyes with their washers, a tapestry needle with a nice big eye so that we can tie in all of our loose ends. You're also going to want three different colors of yarn. All of the yarn is going to be the size 4 yarn. You're going to want a nice deep rich red and it can be any brand you want. I think this might be a red heart yarn could be big twist. One of, as long as you got the right weight of yarn, it'll work for you. You're also going to want a nice pale orange. So you can see I don't have very much, but we don't need very much, and that's going to be for the belly. And then you're going to need black. Again, all of it is going to be that size four. Once you have all your materials together, we are going to start with the red yarn. We're going to start by doing a magic circle. Uh, because this is a slightly more complicated pattern, I'm not going to go over how to do a magic circle, but if you look at some of my other videos, the I go over in detail, step by step, how to do a magic circle, or an adjustable loop as some people call it, or an adjustable ring. They're all the same thing. Uh, we are going to start with a magic circle that is going to be a size 5. It's 5 single crochet into this first magic circle. Once you have your five magic, your five single crochet in that magic circle, you are going to, we're not going to do a slip stitch into this first stitch. We're going to continue around the round with one single crochet per stitch for a round size of five, going in a spiral instead of in a series of circles. When you have your five in our next round, we're going to do increases on each stitch. So that is going to be in this first stitch, two single crochet, the next stitch, another two. And then before you finish out the second of the single crochet in the second stitch or the fourth stitch in this round, when you get to this point, we are halfway through, we're going to do a color change. This is the same way I do all of my color changes. Forgot to add that you also want a pair of scissors so that you can cut your yarn. We're going to do this the same way we do all of the color changes. If you need more clarification, you can see my other videos, but we're going to cut the yarn. Find our orange. Tie it on, and then we're going to finish out that single crochet. Doing it halfway through the single crochet like that makes it so that it's a cleaner transition into our next colors. We're going to do in that orange the increase in the next stitch. And again, before finishing out with our second of those two single crochets, so we're doing one full single crochet, half of another, we're going to color change back to red. So that is now six stitches in this round. We're going to do another four with the two increases per. So one, two, three, four. And that's going to be ten stitches in this most recent round that we have just done. We are going to do another round of the same 10. So that's going to be one single crochet per stitch. As we get to the outer part of that orange, we are going to again stop halfway through our single crochet, cut our yarn, transition into the orange, and finish out the single crochet just like that. 
one stitch per, so a total of two stitches in orange. Change back again to red. Do another four stitches in that red. And that finish as out that round of 10. Okay, now that we finished out our second round of 10, we're gonna go in and increase the size up to 20. So to do that, we're gonna do another increase stitch in every single stitch all the way around. So first stitch, two single crochet. And the next we're gonna do another two. As we get up to the orange, we are again going to color change halfway through that second single crochet in the red. And then two in each of these. Pausing again to change back to red and then finish out the rest of the round in that red. for our 20 all the way around. And you can double check now, make sure you have the 20 that you need. This is as wide as we are going to get on the dragons. So you can see that is where we came up and in line with that eye. Before we get to the feet, it is as fat as it gets. This next round, it's gonna be one single crochet per stitch. And as we get to the belly, we're going to go one additional stitch in in the red. And we're going to make a foot by going out with a chain one, two, so chain two. And then as we look at it, we have the loops on the front and we have a single back hump on the back. And we're gonna go into that back hump with a single crochet. Then we're going to do a color change back over to orange again. Single crochet in the next two stitches and transition back to red. One single crochet in that final bit of orange on the belly, chain two, single crochet to the back hump, and then slip stitch back into that originating stitch that we started from. And then one single crochet in the next eight stitches to finish out the round. Next round, again, we are going to do one single crochet per stitch. As we approach the feet, we want to make sure we don't accidentally add in additional stitches. So we're going to come to this point where we are one stitch away from the foot, when we have another stitch ready to go right in here, and we're gonna do our color change that one space away, back to orange. And single crochet into the outer end. You'll notice that the foot kinda of looks like a triangle from the single. We're going to do one single crochet into the outer edge of that triangle, and then coming into the other side, we wanna make sure we're not accidentally going into this hole here on the inside of that red, because that is the slip stitch that we used to get back into the round previously, and it'll accidentally add in an extra stitch where you don't want one. Instead, we're going to skip past it into this first orange and do a single crochet, making sure we push that foot out to the outside of the body so it doesn't get trapped inside. Then one more single crochet in the next stitch, and again, we're gonna start with this outer edge of the triangle, start a single crochet there, and then because that's our fourth of these orange stitches for the belly, we are going to change our color back to red again. Finish out that single crochet. And then same as before, we're gonna make sure we're not going into this first hole because that is the slip stitch hole. We wanna go into the next hole along, which is the first past the foot true single crochet from the previous round. Once we're here, if you give the feet a little tug, they'll make sure they're sitting out as much as they should be and no bits of them accidentally got stuck inside the body and finish out the final seven stitches of this round. We're now gonna do another two rounds of 20 with the four orange 
at the belly, making sure that we color change halfway through a single crochet so that those color changes are clean. So that's another two rounds of 20. All right, so I've just finished out my final round of three rounds of 20. So we're gonna go down and our next round is going to include another set of feet. So we're gonna go make sure we get all the way to the bottom, to the belly. When we get to the belly, we're gonna go one additional stitch in and then chain out twice, one, two. Single crochet to that back hump change back to orange again. Slip stitch back to that originating stitch that we came from. Put in another two single crochets in that orange, one, two, and then change back over to red again. Then one single crochet in the final bit of the orange of the belly. Chain two, single crochet to that back hump. Then slip stitch back to that originating stitch. In one stitch each, we're going to finish out this round. Our next round, same as when we did the last foot feet, we are going to make sure we go around and get another set of 20 in, including four yellow. So we're gonna do a color change before we get to the foot. This first outer foot, same the way, exactly the same way we did our previous round. As you finish out that round of 20, just go through. This is another good time to make sure you have the right number. And then our next round, we are going to bring the size down from 20 to 16 stitches. To do that, we are going to do three single crochet, one stitch each. So one in the first stitch, one in the next, and then one in the third. And then in our next stitch, you're going to decrease. You can do this either by skipping over that fourth stitch and doing a single crochet, or you can do a single crochet together or a decrease stitch where you loop for, through that fourth stitch and the fifth stitch and then pull the loop through both of those. This is what I prefer to do, but either method will work about the same. So that was one, two, three single crochets and then a decrease stitch. Again, one, two, three. And on this third, we are going to change to orange. and then a decrease stitch here. One single crochet in the next, and we're going to change back to red so that we only have our two yellow or orange stitches on the belly for the tail. Second, our third single crochet, decrease, one, two, three, and our final decrease of this round. And that should bring us back from a 20 down to 16. And this is a very good time to pause so that we can add in the eyes right at the front of the head. 
the way there's a few ways you can pause you can either put a stitch marker in here where your hook is or I just like to pull a little extra thread through so that I don't accidentally lose my spot while I pause to stick the eyes in. The eyes are gonna go, like I said before, one round in front of the feet and just a decent ways up the body. If we look on the ones that I've already done, you wanna position them somewhat like that. You can also ultimately go with whatever your heart says looks cute Eyes are pretty forgiving on these, so I'm going to stick mine right about there, and then you can go and back and like turn it around, look at different angles, make sure you like it. If you have them where you like them, I like to use my thumbs and then my fingers on the inside of the rest of the body so that I can push against the eyes to flip the body inside out, and that way I can access the stems so that I can put those washers on. Push them through until they're secure and then roll the whole dragon so that's the right way back out again. You can stick your hook back through, pull it tight, and we are ready to continue the rest of our crocheting of the tail. We're gonna do another round of 16, so that's gonna be one stitch per, and on these two orange stitches of the belly, you're going to change back to orange the same way we've been doing for the rest of the body. So that's again, another round of 16, one stitch, one single crochet per stitch. I've just finished that round of 16, which means I am going to go into the next round where we are going to decrease the size of the round from 16 down to 12. We're going to do that in a similar pattern to the way we did before by going one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next, and then we are going to do a decrease. So where before we did a series of one, two, three decrease, we are now doing a one, two, and then decrease. So that's one, two. And then here you might notice that I am getting up on the tail and our next stitch is a decrease stitch. So we want these two to be joined together with an orange. So I'm gonna color change to orange. And then I'm gonna do my decrease stitch, looping through twice, pulling through both. And then one stitch in orange, changing back to red. Then two, and decrease. Then another one, two, and decrease. That'll bring our round size back down to 12. Same as we did with the 16, we're gonna do a round of 12, making sure we include the two orange of the belly. So that's one stitch each. Just finished my round of 12. Our next round we are going to bring it down to eight by doing a pattern of one single crochet and then a decrease, one single crochet, and a decrease. And this is where we are going to change to orange halfway through this decrease so we have our two, three loops on there. We're gonna change to orange so that we have just that little bit of belly remaining. orange, one single crochet, back to red, decrease, one, decrease. This is a good point to stop and get all of the stuffing that we're going to want in him in. So I'm gonna, same as the way I did with the eyes, pull just enough light through that I can make sure I don't get, lose my spot. And then you're gonna take your stuffing and working in small bits at a time so you don't get any weird clumps inside of him. You're gonna go ahead and stuff as much as you want 
to get him stuff to the level of satisfaction that you want him to be. As you are stuffing, keep in mind that later we are going to be attaching additional details, such as the horns, the spine, and the wings, and all of the excess of those, or a great deal of the excess of those in attaching them, is going to wind up inside the body as well. So as you're stuffing him, try to make him just ever so slightly understuffed from what you want him to ultimately be. me, I'm going to wind up using all the stuffing I have here. Let's squish him, make sure you feel it out, see how you like him. I have him stuffed just enough that he's going to maintain his structure even after squished. He'll bounce back. Now we're going to go back into our loops. We just finished out our round bringing the size down to 8, which means in our next round we are going to do a decrease, one decrease, two decrease, three. When we hit our three, in our next stitch we are going to do a slip stitch to close off the final bit of the tail. So remember that's in that final round, we're not going to get all the way back around to the top again, we're going to do only three. Slip stitch, pull that through. Then using our needle, if you take your yarn, your tail, and you fold it in half and pinch it between the tips of your fingers, you can take the side of the needle, open it out, and kind of rub back and forth, and it'll make it really easy to thread that yarn through. And then just tie through each of the loops to close off the end of the tail. Nice and tight. Give it a tie and then lose the tail inside the body. You can either cut off the excess, or I frequently like to use the remainder of the stuffing. So I will use the back of the needle to stuff the rest of the tail back inside. Now that we're here, if you take and you sort of counter twist the body, you can even out using the belly to tell you how much more you need to straighten out some of the stitches. Mine tend to curve a little bit, so I like to take this moment to straighten him back out. Just like that. Now, what are we going to do is go into making the spine. To make this, you're going to want to make a slip knot by leaving yourself a decent length of thread here to be your tail because we are going to use that to craft the little black bit on the top of his nose. We are then going to go just a few stitches back from the eyes and in line with the center of the body. So I'm going to go right to here and stick my hook through and then grab that slip knot and pull just the knot through and pull it tight around my hook like that and then grab the thread that is going back towards our yarn and not the shorter thread that is going to wind up being the nose later. And do a single chain through on that. And then leaving the shorter thread hanging anywhere, we're going to do a series of stitches down the back. In our first one, keeping in line with where we are here, we're going to go into the next stitch with a single crochet. And into this next stitch here, we are going to do a half double crochet. So we're going to loop the yarn over, go into the body, loop through that next stitch, pull it through, and then pull our thread through both. The next is going to be a single crochet again, then a half double. And this is going to continue until we get to the tip of the tail. Once we get to the tip of the tail, we are going to do two half double crochet right into the tip, 
in that first stitch. So both of these two half double crochet are going to go into that same spot there. And then another two on the other side of the tail. Half double crochet, same stitch. And that's just gonna help us curve around the edge of the tail. Then one final single crochet on the other side going towards the belly. Just like that. We are going to finish this out by doing a slip stitch in that same spot that we just did our single crochet in. So that we can tie off that black. So we can then cut that pull it all the way through to the other side, and then lose this tail inside the body. Once you've lost it inside the body, we're going to come back over to this longer thread coming out the front. And we're gonna thread it through our needle and go into the same hole it is currently coming out of, all the way to the front of the nose, straight out the center of what was originally our starting magic circle. We just pulled it out of the magic circle. We're gonna go down the top of the nose, one stitch, and back out through that magic circle, but we're not gonna pull it tight there. We're gonna keep it a little bit loose, so we have a loop like that. When we have a loop like that, we're gonna then take the rest of the thread, go through that hole. I'm actually gonna pull it slightly tighter so that I don't have to pull it tighter later, but just very loose little loop. I'm gonna go through one, two, three times. Make sure each of those different loops is sitting in its own spot. Then you can pull it tight. and then go back into this hole that we started from, back towards the rest of the body. And don't pull it so tight that you lose it. So notice how it's sticking out just a little bit. And then we can then stuff the rest of this black thread inside the body. Next is the horns. To do the horns, we are going to go back to our black thread. Do the same slip stitch as before. And about a stitch behind and a stitch above the eye, we are going to put our crochet hook through. Grab the loop of that slip stitch, our slip knot. Pull just the loop of that through. And then we're going to chain one two, three, four. And then we're going to go back along the back humps with one slip stitch here, two in the next hump. So that's a slip stitch on each of the back humps that are visible. And then one stitch back from where we started, we are going to do a slip stitch back to the body. We can cut our thread, pull it through, and then lose our excess inside the body. That's one of our horns. The other horn is going to be done exactly the same way, just on the other side of the spine and the body. That's the most of the body. Next, we are going to make two sets of wings. 
And as I went through at the beginning of the video, there are a couple ways to go about making these wings. There is a easy way and there is a slightly trickier way. So the slightly trickier way gives you these little wing ridges. And then the easier way is going to be a bit more flat. They're still both very cute options. So what we're going to do to start is setting the main body aside. We are going to start with a slip knot. and then chain five. Once we have chain five, we are gonna turn over and go down the back humps. In this first back hump, we are going to do one single crochet. And then in the next, there will be two single crochets. And then two in the next as well. And then two in that final stitch. There should now be seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we are going to chain two, then do a half double crochet, one to this first back stitch, and then a half double crochet in each of the stitches, one half double crochet per. Once we get to the end of all of these half double crochets, we are going to chain four. And then in this first back hump on that chain, we are going to do a slip stitch. And then a half double crochet back to the body in this first stitch. Do another series of two half double crochets, so that's three. Chain two, slip stitch into this back hump, half double crochet in the next stitch and the next, and then finish out with that last. That's the simpler version where we make our two little ridges with the, those chains out and then it's all half double crochet along. To do the slightly more complex version, when we are doing our first rounds of half double crochet, it will be the same with the chain five single crochet with the doubles at the ends. And then at this bit, we are going to do our first half double crochet into this first stitch and the next. And But in the third, instead of doing a half double crochet straight into the outer edge of these two loops, we are going to do a front hoop or a front post half double crochet. We are instead going to go to the post of this half double crochet or the single crochet that we had originally done and do our half double crochet there. And then follow up with our next one, two, and three. And that'll start this little ridge here forming. Then here we are going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then go into this back hump here with a slip stitch Half double crochet to that next row and in the next stitch and then where we come to this hump instead of going into the stitch like we normally would for a half double crochet our half double crochet is instead going to go around that back hump first one was a front post stitch this is it now a back post stitch going around that then we're going to chain two slip stitch to that first bit of the chain on that back hump into the next stitch as a standard half double crochet then two and that finishes out the wing and that is the more complex way to make the little dragon wings you're going to want to just pull through enough thread that you can tie it on and that is the left side wing to make the other side it's exactly the same way, but it's going to be mirrored. So wherever, if you're doing the more complicated version, whenever I say you're gonna do a back post, you're going to do a front post, and whenever I say a front post, you're gonna do a back post instead. But other than that, it's the exact same thing. If you're doing the simple version, it's even simpler. You can just make two exactly the same way and just make sure that they are, you have one flipped around the other way when you attach them to the body.
and that is our second wing. So you can then cut enough length off that we'll be able to sew it onto the body with. Pull it through, and then using our needle, we are then going to sew these wings to the body, making sure that if we have the more complicated version with the ridge, it is facing down. So this one is the right wing, and it is going to go on the right side of the body. Just a few stitches down, about halfway between where the horn lies and the belly starts. So that's going to go right here. I'm going to loop through right there with one. Next stitch. And then I'm going to tie it off. And attaching these wings, you can play around with the position of where you have them, kind of as much as you want. They are going to be attached to where you think looks the cutest for the little dragon that you are making. Then you can also take this other thread, weave it in a little bit towards the body, just back and forth, and then it can also be an excess tail that is lost inside the main body of the dragon. The other ring is going to be attached in the same way, just on the opposite side. Once you have your two wings attached, that's it. You have made a cute little, real chonky red dragon. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Uh, I know I skimmed over more than I usually do in my other videos, but I felt like this was a slightly more complex pattern. So if you want, things broken down even further, like some of the basics of what a magic circle is, how to do a single crochet, you can check out some of my other videos where I go over all of that in greater detail. Um, if you liked this one, stay tuned because you might have noticed that there have been these little guys in the background that are going to be my next tutorial that I release, Little Tiny Cthulhu's. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.